Hello, this is Dr. Mokhtar Rima. Welcome once again to my channel. Today, I'm going to talk about a very interesting condition that occurs during sleep. Sleep is a very important aspect of our lives. And that is why we spend up to about a third of all our total lifetime just merely sleeping. So, and during sleep, there is this condition called sleep paralysis. But before I get into it, I'm going to ask you a question. Have you ever had an experience experience in which you are sleeping and all of a sudden you realize that you are unable to move any part of your body you are unable to move your hands move your legs move your head you're not even able to move your even your fingers and your toes and you are unable to talk you're unable even to scream for help you make all the efforts in this world and you are simply unable to do it and somehow you are consciously aware of the fact that you're struggling but you cannot seem to move your hands or your bodies. In fact, you may even believe that it is demons or it is genes or it is devil that is sitting on you and that experience is something I want to ask you if you have ever had that kind of thing. Well, if you have had this kind of experience and chances are that you may have had this kind of experience because about one in five people at least may have had this kind of experience at least once in their lifetimes. So what is this condition? This condition is called sleep paralysis. It is a condition that affects about at least one in five people in their lives. And this is a condition that usually happens at the beginning beginning of sleep when you are about to transition from being partially awake to being fully asleep or it may happen when you are about to wake up from sleep that time when you are transitioning again from being fully asleep to waking up so these are the times in which this condition called sleep paralysis occurs so and that's why no wonder you tend to experience it more in the beginning of the night or towards the end of the night so in this condition you tend to realize that you cannot move any part of your body you cannot speak you feel a sense of a weight on you or you tend to feel as if something is pressing on you or pinning you down and you are simply Simply unable to move any part of your body. You also cannot speak. You cannot even scream for help. But you tend to continue to struggle. You tend to try to make an effort to come out of it. You also tend to have this sense of presence of something or someone in the room. Some people also tend to hear some things or see some things during that experience. Now, this experience is actually a very scary experience because, like I said, you are half awake. You are partially awake. Awake because like I said it happens at a time when you are transitioning from being awake to being asleep or you are transitioning from being asleep to being awake so it happens when at a time when you are in the middle you are not fully awake and you're not fully asleep so you are partially awake somehow and that is why it is very scary another reason why it is scary is that because you are partially awake you are consciously aware of some of the things that are going on only that you are not fully awake so you cannot do anything about it and again you are able to think somehow so so because you're able to think, that's why you may even want to make effort to come out of it. You will struggle with it. You will struggle with the weight. You will struggle to move your body. But most times it is in vain. So this experience goes on for only a few seconds and maybe maximum for very few minutes. And before you know it, it is over and you are able to move your body. You are able to even talk and you are able to wake up. Then you realize that that experience was a horrible experience and you don't want to go uh, through it again. And also because you were partially awake and therefore you have some consciousness in you so you would now begin to now give your own interpretations to it and that is where we begin to think that maybe it is a demon that was sitting on us maybe it is a gene that was sitting on us maybe it is any sort of creature that was sitting on us that was preventing us from moving from doing anything and that was essentially paralyzing us so I'm here to tell you that that is not a demon or a gene or anything sitting down on you. So it is a form of sleep disorder that is called sleep paralysis. And that's why you feel paralyzed. And that's why you're unable to move any part of your body. And that's why you feel as if it is a weight that is being placed on you or that is sitting on you. So, but if it is sleep paralysis, what is this sleep paralysis? To understand sleep paralysis, you need to understand a little bit of what happens when we are sleeping. So let me give you a few of that background so that you are able to understand what sleep paralysis is and so that you drop the myth that these things are demons or there are some creatures that are giving you that experience. 
So essentially, we as humans tend to spend our day doing a lot of things. We are active doing all sorts of things. And in whatever thing we do, it is the brain that is responsible for those things. So the brain is the one that helps us with organizing, controlling, planning, executing, doing anything. So when we talk, there's a center of the brain that is responsible for talking. When we breathe, there's a center of the brain that is responsible for controlling our breathing. Whatever we do, you know, the brain is responsible. So when we move, even we like when you talk, you move, you do anything, there's a part of the brain that is responsible for that. And you can imagine that that brain can get tired. And that is why at the end of the day, we go to sleep. The important role of that sleep is to allow the brain to refresh itself, to rejuvenate itself, kind of to recover from all the extra effort that it has been making to make sure that we are able to execute our day-to-day -day activities. So that is the essence of sleep, right? So when we go to sleep, however, there are two stages of sleep. The first stage of sleep is called the slow wave sleep. Now, that slow wave sleep, it is that part of the sleep when we tend to go into a very deep sleep and it is the most restful part of the sleep. It is called slow wave sleep because the activity of the brain has been slowed down. So if you were to put the brain on a computer or something, you see that it is only slow waves that you will find because there are some waves of the brain that you can pick on some certain kinds of computers. So it is called slow wave because now the brain has calmed down, it is trying to recover. So you now find that the brain activity is slow and that's why it is called slow wave sleep, right? Now during type, that type of sleep, the brain is trying to recover and there is virtually no any activity. Now when we first go into sleep, like okay, you lie down now and you initiate sleeping now, you start with the first episode of slow wave sleep and we usually spend maximum of about 90 minutes in the first episode of the slow wave sleep after those 90 minutes you move to the first episode of another stage of sleep that is called rapid eye movement sleep now it is also called rapid eye movement sleep because during that time if you were to look at the eyes of the individual either by maybe visually looking at it or by hooking up hooking it up with some certain machines, you might find that the eyes are moving very rapidly. Now, in that stage of sleep, we tend to spend about 15 minutes initially, but as the night progresses, we tend to spend more time in this second stage of sleep, which is the rapid eye movement sleep, and we spend less time in the slow wave sleep. Because like I told you, when you first go to sleep, you need a lot of the sleep to recover, the brain needs to recover. So that's why it puts itself in that slow wave. And that's why we spend a lot of time in the slow wave sleep, usually 90 minutes maximum. But as the night progresses, the brain is getting feeling rested. Now the brain tends to spend less time in this stage of slow wave and we spend more time in the rapid eye movement sleep. Now during that rapid eye movement sleep, that is a time when we are more likely to dream. And when we dream in that stage, that is the type of dream that we're able to remember. So it means that you are more likely to dream towards the end of the night than are you to dream towards the beginning of the night. So and that's why no wonder this sleep paralysis tends to happen more during the end of the night. So but what happens during that rapid eye movement sleep? So like I told you, during the rapid eye movement sleep, the eye is rolling, um, kind of rolling faster, rolling a lot. Now, but that's not the only thing that happens. Also, there are some things that happen in the brain. So if you were to look at the brain of an individual in that stage of sleep called the rapid eye movement sleep, the brain is very active as if it is even likened to the kind of level of activity that you may find in somebody who is fully awake, who is doing maybe an active mental activity. Maybe you're reading a book, maybe you're thinking, maybe you're doing calculation. All the things that happen in your brain during that wakeful stage when you're actively involving the brain, it is exactly what you find in the rapid eye movement sleep stage. That's the stage when we dream. There's a lot of activity going on during dreams and that's why during that rapid eye movement sleep, the brain has a lot of activity. So, but there's one other thing that happens. The brain realizes that if you're dreaming, there's a tendency that you may want to act out your dream. So if you're dreaming that you're running during dream, you may want to actually begin to run, right? Or if you dream that you're fighting with somebody and you punch them, 
there's a tendency that you may want to do that. So your brain realizing this, now at that stage of sleep, it paralyzes all the muscles of your body during the rapid eye movement sleep. So that should you dream, you will not be able to act out those dreams. So even if you find yourself dreaming and you're jumping or you're running or you're fighting with somebody, you will not be able to act it out act physically. So you may not be able to end up running. Imagine you waking up while you're sleeping and finding yourself jumping pain or running or doing all sorts of things that would be very dangerous because during that time you are sleeping and you're doing this kind of thing you might injure your body terribly and so the brain is trying to protect you right so it now paralyzes all the muscles of your body then it does that very comfortably by sending down some information that run down through our spinal cord and it goes to every muscle of our body and it paralyzes those muscles except the muscles that we need for breathing and that's why you breathe normally during dreams and during any activity and also the muscles of our heart because the, our heart is also made up of muscles and so it allows the heart to continue beating and also the muscles of our genitals so that if you dream of maybe sexual activity perhaps you may be able to execute that so that is the philosophy right now but in sleep paralysis what happens is that your brain during that rapid eye movement sleep has already paralyzed your muscles and you now are in a stage where you are partially awake and you're partially asleep so unfortunately for some reason sometimes that kind of stage in which your, the muscles are still paralyzed but now you are about to be woken up so your consciousness has started coming as if you're about to wake up but your muscles are still paralyzed as normally obtains during rapid eye movement sleep so you have the consciousness you want to move you want to talk as if you're awake but then you realize all of a sudden that wow why am i unable to move my legs why am i open to, able why am i unable to move my hands even my fingers why am i unable to talk why am i unable to even scream for help that is because that stage in which the brain paralyzes the muscles of your body is still on and you've not fully awoken and you are not again fully asleep so that is what explains why you feel that you cannot move anything but additionally during that time some people tend to have what we call hallucinations in which they feel as if there is something with they may even sense or see some things or hear some things because you are partially awake so essentially this is what goes on with us in our brain during sleep paralysis. So it's not demons, it is not genes, it is not devil, it is not anybody, it is a sleep condition. And it happens to some people. There are people who have this condition often, whereas there are people maybe who have had it just once or a few times in their lives and it doesn't recur again. So if you have sleep paralysis, is it dangerous? What is the implication of having sleep paralysis? So it is a very benign or a very innocent condition and it does not mean that there's something very seriously wrong with you. In any case, most people tend to experience sleep paralysis when they are sleep deprived. So maybe you've not been able to sleep for maybe several days in a row. And then when you go to sleep, you are more likely to have a sleep paralysis than somebody who has not had sleep deprivation. Another reason why some people have sleep paralysis is if they have been on some medications. Another reason why sleep paralysis occurs is if there is another sleep disorder. So there is one type of sleep disorder that is called narcolepsy. People who have that kind of sleep disorder are more likely to have sleep paralysis than people who do not have that kind of sleep disorder. And it is usually treated by or prevented by treating that other type of sleep disorder so that you realize that it stops. So essentially, if you tend to experience this sleep paralysis and you think demons are visiting you every now and then on, on, on your bed during sleep, the advice is that you should try to have a lot of sound sleep. Sleep very well so that when you go to bed subsequently, sleep paralysis will not come because like I said, it is more likely to occur when you are sleep deprived. Also, try to have regular exercise. Regular physical activity tends to normalize our sleeps and therefore it is not likely for you to have sleep paralysis. If you're on any medications that you think may be responsible, just like I said, because there are some medications that may cause it, try to see your doctor and let him look at it, give him this particular complaint, let him review it and see whether there are other medications that can be changed for you. All right, so that's it for today. Thank you for listening.